Um, and we're going to go over these cool artifact reprints. Um, well, obviously, Brothers War is a story about going back in time to witness something to do with the Brothers War when Phyrexians kind of started their tyrannical power trip over all of the multiverse. Um, Mishra was one of the first of the Fallen, and it kind of trickled down from there. Many, many years later, and Dominar United happened, where Phyrexia, Phyrexians have now returned to Dominaria to finish what they started and complete everybody. Uh, they got a Johnny. Rest in pickles. Um, a Johnny, big fluffy boy. Um, so Teferi has gone back in time to witness the past, to find out what happened after the Brothers' War, during the Brothers' War, um, so he can maybe figure out how to stop the Phyrexians this time. We do not know if it's happening. We do not know if he figures it out. The next set is called Phyrexia All Will Be One, so the chances are he doesn't figure it out. But because we're jumping back in time, and because this set is all about artifacts, because both of these brothers are artifact and machine worshippers slash creators. Um, Wizards is printing a bunch of old artifacts with some with new art, some with old art. And they all have the cool retro borders. So we'll quickly go through them all. Um, adaptive autom aut Automaton is three colorless for a 2-2 artifact creature construct with as adaptive automaton enters the battlefield choose a creature type um adaptive auto automaton is the chosen creature type in addition to its other types other creatures you control of the chosen type get plus one plus one so it's a cool little um lord for whatever creature type you want aetherflux reservoir is well there's 60 of these? Oh, okay, no. Yeah. These are the reaps. So they're doing also these like sketchbook um, blueprint versions. Um, anyway, we can go through 60 cards real quick, right? The second one is Aetherflux Reservoir for four colorless. You get an artifact whenever you cast a spell. Gain a life for each spell you've cast this turn. You can pay 50 life. Aetherflux Reservoir deals 50 damage to any target. So it's a bit of a giant foot stomp. But it takes a little while to get there. Altar of Dementia. Two mana or an artifact sacrifice a creature target player mills cards equal to the sacrifice creature's power and we've got a reprint of ashnod's altar we spoke about this earlier when we were looking at ashnod um oh you cannot see my mouse why would i ever turn that off um soundtrack where's the browser Oh, there we go. Properties. Capture cursor. Oh, it is on. Oh, maybe I'm just not clicked into the window. I'm just scrolling benevolently from outside the window. Um, so Ashnod's Altar. We spoke about this earlier. Three colorless mana. Sacrifice a creature. Add two colorless. Astral Cornucopia. XXX. Astral Cornucopia enters the battlefield with X charge, charge counters on it. Tap, choose a color, add one mana of that color for each charge counter on Astral Cornucopia. So it's a lot of setup, um, but you get a lot of mana in return. Black Blade Reforged is a big deal equipment. Two mana, two colorless equipped creature gets plus one plus one for each land you control. Equip legendary creature three, equip normal creature seven. If you have the everything equips for one guy out on the battlefield, Black Blade Reforged becomes very scary. 
this plus that other card we were talking about a moment ago is going to make that dwarf equipment deck absolutely terrifying. I do not want to play against it. Then we've got Bonesaw. Bonesaw is ready. Zero mana for an artifact equipment. Equipped creature gets plus one plus O oh, and its equip cost is one. That's it. Burnished Heart, three mana for a 2-2 two, two artifact creature elk. Pay three, sacrifice Burnished Heart, search your library for up to two basic lands. Put them on the battlefield, tap, then shovel. Caged Sun is a six mana mythic artifact. As Caged Sun enters the battlefield, choose a color. Creatures of the chosen color get plus one, plus one. Whenever land ability causes you to add one or more mana of the chosen color, add one additional mana of that color. Chromatic Lantern, three colorless for an artifact. Lands you control have tap to add one mana of any color. Tap it to add one mana of any color. So it changes everything into five color mana sources. Chromatic Star is one mana for an artifact. Pay one, tap it, sacrifice Chromatic Star, add one mana of any color. Uh, when Chromatic Star is put into a graveyard from a battlefield, draw a card. So you pay one and then pay another to you basically filter one mana into whatever color you want. But you get to draw a card, which is a good upside. This is a really popular one, Cloud Key. Three co colorless for an artifact. As Cloud Key enters the battlefield, choose artifact, creature, enchantment, instant, or sorcery. Spells you cast of the chosen type are one less to cast. And we've got Defense Grid, two colorless for an artifact. Each spell costs three more to cast, except during its controller's turn. So people are less able to play reactively. Um, door to Nothingness is five colorless. Door to Nothingness enters the battlefield tapped. Then you can pay double Wooberg and tap it to sacrifice it. Target player loses the game. I guess. Elsewhere Flask is two colorless for an artifact. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card. You can sacrifice it to choose a basic land type. Each land you control becomes that type until end of turn. Pretty neat. Uh, Foundry Inspector, three mana for a 3-2 artifact creature construct. Artifact spells you cast cost one less to cast. Pretty neat. Uh, Gilded Lotus is five colorless for an artifact. Tap it to add three mana of any one color. Then we've got Goblin Char Belcher, a four mana artifact. Pay three, tap it, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a land card. Goblin Char Belcher deals damage equal to the number of non land cards revealed this way to any target. If that, if the revealed tar land card was a mountain. Goblin Char Belcher deals double that damage instead. Put the revealed card on the bottom of your library in any order. So this is great in a model red aggro deck. Just Char Bel Belcher the heck out of them. Then we've got Helm of the Host, one of the craziest equipments in all of Magic, getting reprinted um, for four colorless legendary artifact equipment. At the beginning of combat on your turn, create a token that's a copy of equipped creature, except the token isn't legendary, if equipped equipped creature is legendary, that token gains haste. So you equip Helm of the Host to anything, and you just, every combat, spit out a new copy of it. Every single one. Every one of them. Then we've got Howling Mine. Two mana for an artifact at the beginning of each player's draw step. If Howling Mine is untapped, that player draws an additional card. Pretty cool. Then we've got Icker Wellspring, two mana for an artifact. When Icker Wellspring enters the battlefield or is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, draw a card. So two mana, draw a card, and then eventually you get to draw another card. Inspiring Statuary. That was a heavy lisp word, Statuary. Three mana for an artifact. Non-artifact spells you cast have Improvise. So Improvise is your artifacts can help cast those spells. Each artifact you tap after 
you're done activating mana abilities pays for one. Pretty cool. Ivory Tower is one mana for an artifact. At the beginning of your upkeep, you gain X life, where X is the number of cards in your hand, minus four. So if you have 13 cards in your hand, you gain nine life. Uh, Jaloom Tome, three mana for an artifact. Pay two, tap it, draw a card, then discard a card. It's a nice little looty book. Jernier's, Jernier's Kite. That word hurts my brain. Chernaya's uh, Kite is two mana for an artifact. Pay three, tap it, search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. And you don't have to sacrifice the kite. So this is just turn two, play it, turn three, start ramping if you want. Jernier's. 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 It looks like someone's name. But Journeyers is just a weird word. Then we've got Keening Stone. Don't try to correct me. No, I'm kidding. Correct me, please. Uh, Keening Stone is six mana for an artifact. Pay five, then tap it. Target player mills X cards where X is the number of cards that in that player's graveyard. Ooh. Ooh. Key to the city. Two mana for an artifact. Tap, then add. Oh, I do, do I not have chat on this? I don't have chat on this scene. Sorry. Your foul words are for mine eyes only. Uh, key to the city is two colorless for an artifact. Tap it to discard a card. Up to one target creature can't be blocked this turn. Whenever key to the city becomes untapped, you may pay to if you do draw a card. Liquid metal coating. This is a good one. Two mana for an artifact. Tap it. Ta target permanent becomes an artifact in addition to its other types until end of turn. Really cool. Lodestone golem is four mana for a five, three artifact creature golem. Non artifact spells cost one more to cast. Really neat. Maze Mind Tome, love this card. Two mana for an artifact. Tap it to put a page counter on Maze Mind Tome and scry one. Then you can pay two. Tap it, put a page counter on Maze Mind Tome to draw a card. And then when there are four or more page counters on Maze Mind Tome, exile it. If you do, gain five, four life. So you get to either scry four over time or scry two maybe and draw a couple it's pretty good and then you gain four life real good uh mesmer mesmeric orb two mana for a mythic artifact whenever a permanent becomes untapped that permanence controller mills a card savage millstone two colorless for an artifact pay to tap it target player mills two cards it's a millstone get it and it's like slowly grinding away at this person's brain, which is kind of what it's like to play against a mill deck. Mind's Eye. Five colorless for a mythic artifact. Whenever an opponent draws a card, you may pay one. If you do, you get to draw a card too. Everyone gets to draw a card. Yay. Then we've got zero mana for a Mishra's Bobble artifact. One of the most popular artifacts in all of Magic. Tap it to sacrifice Mishra's Bobble. Look at the top card of target player's library. Draw a card at the beginning of the next upkeep. So you just get to peek at your opponent's library. Or you can peek at your library to see what's coming. And you just get to draw an extra card for zero mana. Uh, Mox Amber is also zero mana for a mythic legendary artifact. Tap it to add one mana of any color among legendary creatures and planeswalker you control. Pretty good. Mystic Forge is four colorless for another mythic artifact. You may look at the top card of your library anytime you like. You may cast artifact spells and colorless spells from the top of your library. You can tap it to pay one life and exile the top card of your library. Just in case you don't want it, I guess. And we've got Ornithopter is zero mana for an O2 artifact creature Thopter with flying. So it does nothing on its own, but uh, 
it can become formidable. There's a lot of artifact creature swells, spells in this set. Perilous Vault is four mana for a mythic artifact. Pay five, tap it, exile Perilous Vault, exile all non-land permanents. Just a nice little board wipe. Uh, Phyrexian Processor, four mana for a mythic artifact. As Phyrexian Processor enters the battlefield, put any pay any amount of life. Pay for tap it to create XX black Phyrexian minion creature tokens. Where X is the life paid as Phyrexian Processor entered the battlefield. So you could, on turn four, assuming you haven't taken any damage. Play this on turn four, pay 10 life. And then on turn five, make a 10, 10. So that's pretty good. Then we've got Phyrexian Revoker, two mana artifact creature, Phyrexian Horror, two, one. As Phyrexian Revoker enters the battlefield, choose a non-land card name. Activated abilities of sources with the chosen name can't be activated. So it's Pithing Needle on a creepy spider thing. Creepy spider needle. Platinum Angel. They're reprinting Platinum Angel. Platinum Angel is seven mana for a mythic angel with that's four four. It has flying. You can't lose the game and your opponent can't win the game. Yep. Precursor Golem. Five colorless for an artifact creature Golem. Three, three. Uh, when Precursor Golem enters the battlefield, create two other three, three colorless Golem artifact creature tokens. When a player casts an instant or sorcery spell that targets only a single Golem, that player copies that spell for each other Golem that spell could target. Each copy targets a different one of those Golems. So you get a bunch of golems for free, but if anyone targets one of your golems, they're essentially targeting all of your golems for free. Pristine Talisman. Three mana for an artifact. Tap it to add colorless and gain a life. Pretty good. Psychosis Crawler. Five colorless for a star star Phyrexian horror creature. Psychosis Crawler's power and toughness are equal to the number of cards in your hand. Whenever you draw a card, each opponent loses a life. Pretty cool. Quicksilver, this would actually be really great in that Demir um, Fairy Vandal deck we were talking about. Pretty cool. Quicksilver Amulet is four colorless for an artifact. Pay four, tap it. You may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. Pretty cool. Uh, quietus spike. What a cool word, quietus. Three mana for an artifact, equipment, equipped creature has death touch. Damn. Whenever a equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, that player loses half their life rounded up. Equip three. Then we've got Ramos, the dragon engine. Stellar reprint. I love this card. I mean, I love the idea of this card. I've never played it and I never want to play it. Six mana for a 4-4 four, four legendary artifact creature dragon with flying. Whenever you cast a spell, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Ramos dragon engine for each of that spell's colors. Remove five 1-1 one, one counters from Ramos and add double Wooberg. Activate only once each turn. Actually, my cousin was talking about making a dragon deck, and this is a very viable commander for a dragon deck. Very viable. Rune Chanter's Pike is next. Two colorless for an artifact equipment. Equip creature has first strike and gets plus X plus O, where X is the number of instants and sorcery cards in your graveyard. This would be very good in the Talarian Terror Haughty Jin deck. And its equip cost is a two. Scrap Trawler. Three colorless for a 3-2 artifact creature construct. Whenever Scrap Trawler or another artifact you control is put into a graveyard, from the battlefield, return to your hand target artifact card in your graveyard with lesser mana value. 
Sculpting Steel is three colorless for an artifact. You may have Sculpting Steel enter the battlefield as a copy of any artifact on the battlefield. Not that you control any artifact. Anything you want. The world is your artificial oyster. Self-assembler. Five mana for an artifact or four for artifact creature assembly worker. When self-assembler enters the battlefield, you may search your library for an assembly worker creature card. Reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. That's cute. That little pair of three um, artifact creatures, they were all assembly workers, so you can find them. Semblance Anvil. Three mana for an artifact imp with imprint. When Semblance Anvil enters the battlefield, you may exile a non-land card from your hand. Spells you cast that share a card type with exiled card cost two less to cast. Cool. Sigil of Valor is two colorless for an artifact equipment. Whenever equipped creature attacks alone, it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn for each other creature you control. And it has equip one. Soul Guide Lantern. Love a Soul Guide Lantern. Soul Guide Lantern is one colorless for an artifact when Soul God Lantern enters the battlefield, exile target card from a graveyard. Then you can tap it to sacrifice Soul God Lantern, exile each opponent's graveyard. Or you can tap it, pay one to sacrifice it, and draw a card. Not bad, if I do say so. Springleaf Drum, one mana for an artifact. Tap it to tap an untapped creature you control and add one mana of any color. Not that great. Staff, they're really reprinting like all of the greatest hits. Staff of Domination, three mana for a mythic artifact. Pay one, untap Staff of Domination. You could pay two, tap it to gain a life. You could pay three, tap it to untap target creature. You could pay four, tap it to tap a target creature. Or pay five to tap it and draw a card. <laughs> That's pretty great. There's lots of like dirty, huge combos you can do with this card. Not in standard necessarily, but um, this card sees a lot of play in the artifact decks in Commander because there's lots of just endless cycles you can do with the Staff of Domination. Next up, we have Sundering Titan. Eight colorless for a 710 artifact creature golem. When Sundering Titan enters or leaves the battlefield, choose a land of each basic land type, then destroy those lands. Huh. Swiftfoot Boots. Two mana for an artifact equipment. Equipped creature has hexproof and haste. Equip one. Sword of the Meek is two mana for an artifact equipment. Equip creature gets plus one, plus two. Equip is two. Whenever a 1-1 one, one creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may return Sword of the Meek from the graveyard to the battlefield and attach it to that creature. So because it's Sword of the Meek, it protects the Meek. Comes back. Thorn of Amethyst. Damn. Two mana for an artifact. Non-creature spells cost one more to cast. Rude. Rude. Unwinding Clock is four mana for an artifact. Untap all artifacts you control during each other player's untap step. Unwinding Clock is awesome. Well of the Lost Dreams is four colorless for an artifact. Whenever you gain life, you may pay X, where X is less than half. Where X is less than or equal to the amount of life you gained if you do draw X cards. Right. I have a Well of Lost Dream somewhere. I can't remember what version it was in. Worm Coil Engine. Worm Coil Engine is 6 mana for a 6-6 six, six artifact creature, Phyrexian Worm with Death Touch and Life Link. When Worm Coil Engine dies, create a 3-3 three, three colorless Phyrexian Worm artifact creature token with Death Touch and a 3-3 three, three colorless Phyrexian Worm artifact creature with lifelink. So basically, it the 6-6 three, three, the six, six turns into two 3-3s. Three, one of them gets the death touch, one of them gets the lifelink. It's pretty fun. It's kind of cool. And then for the new arts, we have um, these blueprint art styles is what they're calling them they have the retro borders 
still, which is really cool with the updated kind of art on what it would look like in a concept sketchbook. Um, drawn presumably by one of the people that have created them. I don't know if they went as far as to, um, you know, theme them around who they think made them or who they know made them, but uh, they look pretty cool. I like them. Um, yeah. The original art pieces on a lot of these, I would probably want more than the... the newer blueprint ones but i just wanted to take a look really quickly to the alternate arts just so we could quickly look um they've got all the full art alts of the tap pain lands and then they've got the um the midlife crisis version of the brothers here in this blueprint art which is really cool they've also got the two other planeswalkers teferi and sahili in the alt art and there's the extended arts, which is pretty standard nowadays. Um, they're fine. We've got the new jumpstart cards. We've got the new dog, new constructs, new dragons. Uh, Buy a box promo is the retro version of the Mishra's Foundry. And then we've got the um the cares about however many lands you have are going to be the in-store play promos and then queen kayla bin krug i believe is the first store promo i can't remember what they said i don't think the wizards really like puts a lot of rules on how you can use in-store promos or promo cards um but anyway I appreciate, um, hold on one sec. I appreciate everyone that came by and said hello. That has been all of the new cards coming in Magic the Gathering, the Brothers War. It's going to be a fun and crazy set i'm very excited i've said it multiple times but um stuff like dominaria doesn't hold a lot of it doesn't have a place for me yet because i was not here the first time um and as i'm you know playing oh hydrate good call good call I'm hydrating all over. Sorry if I missed that last one. Oh, you've turned on the God Ramen. Okay, let me do my spiel. God, so this neon sign behind me, uh, my partner got me for my birthday. And we need to get a dimmer switch on it because it is literally the, the brightness of the sun. So I'm going to turn this on for a few seconds and then I'll continue talking about Dominator. Oh, yikes. I need some sunglasses in here. Um, so, yeah, Dominaria doesn't really hold a place uh, for me because I don't have that history with the cards. I don't have that history with the plane. I've met some of the characters since I've returned to Magic. And I'm very excited because spending time with Dominaria United and going back now for the brothers war meeting all these characters hearing more of the story um it is very hard to see anything in this room right now um it, it is great because i'm establishing what what people established with dominaria as a plane many years ago um i'm just gonna turn this off oh thank you popper for redeeming that it's so bright um what many people established years and years ago with Dominaria, with these characters, when I started replaying Magic and getting into it, people were still talking about Urza. Urza is still a big piece in Commander decks, and um, there's a lot of stories and 
communal conversations about these characters and I knew nothing about it. So being able to spend some time in this block, relive these stories, kind of get uh, an idea of how powerful and crazy and destructive and terrible some of these well-known characters are um, has been really cool. And I thank you for for coming to, uh, I was going to say this TED Talk, but it's not a TED Talk. It's a bro talk. Thank you for coming to this bro talk. Uh, we've gone through all five monocolors, all of the multicolor cards, all of the colorless cards, all of the meld cards, uh, all of the artifact cards. We've done the full set. Um, at some point in the next week, I think I'm going to put a do um, a tier list stream where we go over all of the commons and uncommons of the set, and I place them in tiers. We're only doing commons and uncommons because I want to do some limited content, and I think commons and uncommons are what matters in limited. Obviously, the bombs win and lose you games, but the meat and potatoes of limited magic um, are the commons and uncommons. So we're going to do a rank, a tier list. I don't even know what the website is. Everyone uses it, but uh, you get to make a tier list of whatever you input into this website. And I'm going to do that for Brothers War. And then at the end of the set, come February, we can go back and look at our tier list and see if I was right. But I appreciate all of you for coming by now. Um, I'm going to cut all of this out of the YouTube stuff. So this is just for just for y'all on Twitch. And I am very sincere in my appreciation for all of the love and time spent on my videos and my content lately. The YouTube is tracking crazy fast um there's tons of views and tons of hours watched and i could not thank people enough i'm just some random guy who loves stories and loves uh magic and enjoys making this content a lot so feeling slightly redeemed for that effort by getting people's attention and hearing them talk about this thing that i love and be passionate about it has been quite quite a pleasurable journey for me and I can't wait to keep doing more of it. I can't wait to keep doing more of these. I know I've missed a few sets, um, with previous life engagements, but, um, I don't want to miss any more. Um, uh, this makes me really happy to do and it keeps my, my brain going in the right direction. Um, cool. Thank you. I, I really appreciate you saying that. I uh, definitely, definitely check out the YouTube if you're um, interested. I would really love a s subscribe there. We're trying to get um, to a noticeable place. I would love to, you know, continue growing and continue to, if we start to monetize this content, to be able to, you know, spend more time editing and spend more time, you know, writing some scripts and maybe doing some, um, some written editorial content based around the world of magic, the gathering. I think that every content creator I've met has, has been so kind and generous with their time and, and they make such great content that it just makes me want to make great content too, about, we all get to sit around and talk about this thing that we love. Um, 